very good morning. You're watching Rajya Sabha Television. This is the morning edition of Verdict 2014. I'm your host Frank Pereira. Here are the headlines. There is strike in Jammu and Kashmir a day before Prime Minister's rally. At least seven killed in encounter in Arnia. Security stepped up. Jharkhand Chief Minister Hemant Soren files uh, his nomination papers from Dumka constituency. Scrutiny of nominations for fourth phase of polls completed. Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister Omar Abdullah and PDP patron Mukti Saeed among uh, prominent names in the fray. And BJP releases vision document for Jammu and Kashmir assures rehabilitation for Kashmiri pundits promises reservation for women in assembly. Well, Jammu and Kashmir is uh, set to witness some high-profile campaigning today as several big wigs will raise the poll pitch in different constituencies. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will address two rallies in the state today, one in Udhampur and the other in Poonch this afternoon. Senior party leaders and Home Minister Rajnath Singh will campaign for uh, party candidates in Uri, Pahalgam and uh, Karna constituencies. Congress leader Gulam Nabi Azad will also address a series of rallies in Gul Arnas, Riyasi, Gulbarga and Chenani. The second phase of elections in Jammu and Kashmir will take place on December 2nd. Meanwhile, a day before Prime Minister Narendra Modi's rally in Udhampur, terrorists struck in Jammu's Arnia. Nine people, including three civilians and three army soldiers, were killed in a fierce gun battle. The attack comes only days after the army issued a warning of terrorists planning to disrupt polling process in the state. We have a militant group and a militant group. भारत के खिलाफ है वो लाइन ऑफ कंट्रोल में और भी लाइन ऑफ कंट्रोल के अलावा और बाकी हिंटरलैंड में मतलब अंदर के इलाके में भी कुछ ऐसे इनपुट है कि ये लोग जो है इलेक्शन प्रोसेस को वो डिस्टर्ब करना चाहते हैं ऑन वेंसडे आर्मी इशूड द स्टेटमेंट वार्निंग ऑफ पॉसिबल मिलिटेंट स्ट्राइक ड्यूरिंग दी ऑन गोइंग असेंबली पोल्स ऑन थर्सडे द मिलिटेंट स्ट्रक They killed three civilians and got engaged in a fierce gun battle with the security forces in Arnia. Three Jawans were also killed in the gun battle. Pura area jo hai ab usko ham log search kar rahe hain. Apne logon ko wahan pe bheja hai. Iske baare mein jankari ikatti karne ke liye ki koi yahan se jo log aaye hain, unme se splinter group nikal ke aur yahan se kahin nikla to nahi hai. The attack comes a day before Prime Minister Narendra Modi's rally in Udhampur, near to where the incident took place. Home Minister Rajnath Singh assured that the forces are keeping an eye on the situation. Security has been beefed up by BSF along the border. Extra forces have also been deployed in Jammu City, Udhampur and Poonch areas. Udhampur will vote in the second phase on December 2nd. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile, Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi will raise the poll pitch in Charkhan today. He will address two rallies in Chaibasa and Jagannathpur constituencies of West Singhbhum. Both uh, these constituencies go to polls in the second phase of assembly polls on December 2nd. Rahul will be accompanied by state party leaders including the state in charge BK Hari Prasad. Earlier campaigning in the first phase of the polls in Palamu, Rahul Gandhi had launched a scathing attack on Prime Minister Modi, criticizing him for his uh, uh, Ache Din promise and the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. Meanwhile, Maoists struck on poll officials at a village in Charkhand's Latihar district on Wednesday. They torched at least eight vehicles and ambushed a security forces team as well. The attacks coming ahead of the second phase of polls next week have raised security concerns. A day after peaceful polling, Maoists launched an attack on a polling party in Latihar. The polling officials were returning from their cluster points to their base station when they were stopped by the group of rebels. Eight CRPF tractors were set on fire. Maoists also fired upon the polling party which triggered a gun battle with the security forces. However, no one was injured.
हम सुअर आता है खेत में तो धान काटने गए थे लेकिन आवाज सुन के हम घर लौट गए घर आके हम सो गए थे कितना देरी गोलीबारी चला है गोली बाद हम लोग आधा घंटा से हम सुने Maoist had also tossed two vehicles of the polling officials on Tuesday in Chaibasa which will go to polls next week. The state authority termed the attack as an effort by the rebels to disrupt the peaceful polling process. Security has been stepped up in the Maoist affected areas. Patrolling has been intensified in border areas with neighboring states. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. Al Jharkhand's incumbent Chief Minister Hemant Soren filed his nomination papers on Thursday from Dumka constituency. Soren was uh, elected to the Assembly for the first time from this seat way back in 2009. The Jharkhand Chief Minister, who took charge only 14 months back, faces an uphill task to guide JMM back to power. The party is banking heavily on his appeal, especially among the tribal masses who fro from form a big uh, chuck of uh, the state's electorate. Now, the challenge for JMM gets amplified further as the JMM is fighting the election without an alliance with the Congress. A large parts of Dumka Assembly constituency in Jharkhand that uh, go to polls on the 20th of uh, December remain cut off from any form of government aid for development or welfare programs. Residents of villages here say that they have felt none of the ostensible benefits of living in the constituency of the state chief minister, Heyman Soren. Here's a report. Village Murgathali, just 8 kilometers from main Dumka city, among Jharkhand's biggest metros and falling within the assembly constituency limits. Yet the hamlet has felt none of the benefits of being within the chief minister's constituency. Education, housing and irrigation facilities remain a far cry. Many here don't have access to even electricity and a regular water supply. There are no government-run health care centres and nothing for welfare of widows or the aged. Residents even say they were better off before Jharkhand had been created. No avenues for employment, next to no roads, so they remain virtually cut off from the mainstream. The people of Murgathali are completely caught up with the struggles of everyday life and their representatives haven't cared for them either, emerging only at election time. Chief Minister Hemant Soren is to be the Vidhan Sabha candidate from Dumka this time too. He'd been elected to the Assembly from here in 2009. His father, Shibu Soren, has been elected to the Lok Sabha from Dumka. Bring the massive shortcomings in Murgathali village to Hemant Soren's attention and he just tells you there's lots that remains to be done. Opposition candidate Lois Morandi of the BJP points out that Murga Thali is only one of hundreds of villages in Jharkhand completely left out of the development cycle. जो सत्ता में बैठे हैं लोगों गांव का जीवन क्या होता है ये उन लोग को पता ही नहीं है कभी गांव में रहे नहीं हो जो विरासत में जिनको मिला है अनुकंपा के हिसाब से तो उनको ये सारे चीजों का नहीं समस्या समझ में आएगा in villages of this assembly segment, reserved for a lawmaker of the scheduled tribe category, elections come and go, but little has changed. There's only a glimmer of hope that things may get better this time. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha Television. Well, scrutiny of nominations has been done for the fourth phase of polls in Jammu and Kashmir. A total of 195 candidates have filed their papers for this phase to be held on December 14th. Saturday is the last day to withdraw uh, nominations. 18 
Assembly constituencies will vote in this phase, which has quite a few big names in the fray. Chief Minister Omar Abdullah will be in the fray from Sonawar seat. He is seeking a re-election for a second consecutive term. Omar is also in the fray from Birwa constituency, but he chose not to contest from Gandharbal, a seat he represents currently. In Anant Nag, former Chief Minister and PDP patron Mufti Mohammad Saeed will be contesting for a new term. Meanwhile, buoyed by a handsome turnout in the first phase, PDP has stepped up its campaign in the valley for the remaining two phases. Well, uh, PDP patro, pat, patron Mufti Mohammad Saeed addressed uh, a rally in uh, Poonch, outlining his party's agenda after polls. Uh, he assured uh, peace and sustainable economic prosperity if his party is voted to par. He said that the biggest challenge before the Modi government is to deal with the sensitive issue of Jammu and Kashmir. He evoked former Prime Minister Vajpayee in his uh, speech to emphasize that uh, dialogue is the only way out of the Kashmir problem. In free economic zone, desired free, movement free, इसको क्यों मॉडल नहीं बना देंगे जम्मू कश्मीर को लोगों का आना जाना होए तो इसलिए ये करने में पिछले छह साल से हालात हुए विश्वास की कमी हो गई वो सरकार नहीं कर पाए well, in the bid to woo Kashmiri pundits, BJP has promised to reserve three out of 46 assembly seats in Kashmir for the community. Releasing its vision document, uh, the party vowed to initiate the process of resettling Kashmiri pundits. It will also reserve five seats for refugees uh, from the Pakistan-occupied Kashmir from the 24 seats kept vacant for POK. The party also uh, promised to give 33% reservation to women in the Legislative Assembly and Legislative Council. Meanwhile, Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari was back on the campaign trail in Charkhand on Thursday. Gadkari addressed a rally in Hatia, which is scheduled to vote in the third phase on December 9th. Campaigning for the local BJP candidate, Gadkari urged voters to elect a government that will ensure development in the mineral-rich state. BJP is looking to make a comeback in Charkhand after JMM Congress Alliance replaced it. The party hopes to keep up the strong showing in Charkhand in the Lok Sabha elections when it won 12 out of 14 seats. सबसे ज्यादा कोयला यहां पर आपको बिजली नहीं है खनिज संपत्ति है पर उद्योग नहीं है हम देश के तस्वीर को बदलना चाहते हैं गांव गरीब मजदूर किसान का कल्याण करना चाहते हैं अगर देश की परिस्थिति को और राज्य के परिस्थिति को सुधारना है तो दो क्षेत्र महत्व के हैं एक है उद्योग well, that's it on this edition of Verdict 2014. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.